Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show how you can reduce or completely eliminate reflections in stainless steel appliances. Now this is something that happens a lot when you're shooting real estate photography and to show you an example of what I'm going to work through today, this is the before picture and what I'm going to do is turn it into this. Now the technique that I'm going to show you is going to apply mostly to that refrigerator. If you go back, we take a look at that before shot, there's a lot of reflections on that refrigerator. They're coming from the window behind it, also from the ceiling lights. Now you could completely eliminate those reflections by blocking the windows, turning the lights off, doing different stuff like that. It's also though going to affect the amount of light that would be shed onto the appliances and it's a matter of time on site. So what I want to do is also cover how you can recoup the costs of doing this type of editing. So covering that first before getting into that, this is more of an advanced approach. It wouldn't be something necessarily that you would do for just standard quick MLS just to show the kitchen. That would be kind of difficult to take the amount of time for the editing process. Also on site it might be difficult and a lot of time consuming to get out large gobos, flags, or some type of foam core or, or something else to block those windows. Sometimes you can shut the window shades behind you and reduce that and shut the lights on and off and that could also work. But in the case for this, this was for a designer, and when you're getting paid for shoots like this, it's something I talk about in the business techniques book that you can charge by the hour. So while I'm on site, they can either pay me to block all the windows, spend all this time, which can be quite cumbersome when you have their time limited and also the owners of the house that was remodeled, their time is limited. So the other option is that you charge for your editing by the hour. And I suggest charging about 50% of what you do for your on-site hourly charge. That's then just for editing because usually as I talk about also in the biz tech is that when you're charging your entire hourly wage that's to cover not just the time on site but it's commensurate to how much time then would be used for editing. So about 50% is what you charge. So once again this is going to be an advanced approach where it is expected that you would be recouping your costs by charging some editing fees on top of this for that. Now you could also have for an MLS shoot a realtor come back and going hey can you reduce those reflections in the refrigerator and on the range hood and all that? And you can say, absolutely, positively, I can do that. And I'm going to show you how. It, but you do give them a quote for what the cost would be to do that. So once you practice this, you'll get an idea of how long it takes you to do that and what your charge would be if somebody did want you to do that for you. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look how that's done and the steps in Photoshop to make that happen. You ready to take a look? Let's get started. So we'll start out here in Lightroom and in Lightroom what I've done is you've noticed that these are PSD files so as I'm working with my different footage these were all my different flash shots putting it together you can see I ended up cropping this down um, and I'm going to get to why I did that and why I shot so wide here in just a second but anyways as I'm working through this then I've got uh, an entire Photoshop file that I can keep going back in history so it's more than just like typically throughout the video in my other books, I talk about uh, flattening the image so you get a TIFF. That's for most standard work, designer work. I never do that. It's always a Photoshop file. So we're going to open that up in just a second. But once and again, to recap though, what we did, this was the original shot. So here we have the finished shot uh, after cropping and most of the editing. But once again, we've got these reflections up here. So a lot of reflections going on up there on that range hood and just a ton of them going on on the refrigerator. So the final one, then that was delivered was this here. And we can see all those reflections go away. A couple of the things I did here too, if I go back and forth, you'll see that the table in the far distance here was dark and it's something that the designer wanted. And of course, those are also chargeable items uh, that you can make money off of by doing these extra edits for designers. And if realtors are willing to pay for it, then of course you could charge them as well. But first off, one of the things you'll notice is that I had a very wide shot here when I took this. And the reason being is that I'm 
doing a fake tilt shift. The idea here is that I can get high and then I shoot really wide and then when I'm done, I can crop that down. So it looks as though I might have used a tilt shift. I got over top of the counters real well but kept my verticals and so that's why I shot real wide. I knew that I wasn't gonna have that door in there that was actually of no interest to them whatsoever for this particular shot but to make sure that I cut that off, I went ahead and I shot extra wide on this knowing that I was gonna go ahead and crop that down. Once you get into the practice of doing these fake tilt shifts, um, that's not a problem. I could do more videos on that too. But let's get into the editing process for this. So what I've done is I've opened that up in Photoshop. So in Photoshop here, I've got a ton of layers, which you can see over here. And this is, of course, the full size picture before it got cropped down. Now, let's start taking away some stuff. So first thing is the table over here. I'm taking away what I did for the edits, and I can show that another time. And now let's take away the refrigerator. So to get the layers to fix the refrigerator, and by the way, underneath of here, this was the same technique used to get rid of these reflections up here on the range hood. I'm only going to concentrate on the refrigerator for this. So what we need to do is find the color of the refrigerator. We want to have a gray color and we're going to use a selective edit to do that. So first thing though is let's just take a look. We're going to do a, an alt click on the base layer which was just one of my flash layers. I'm going to take the color picker and for the foreground color, I'm gonna find something on here that looks about the gray color that I want on the refrigerator. And that, that looks pretty good, I think, there. So we'll go ahead and select that. Let's turn all the other layers back on that we had by doing another alt click on that little eye icon. Let's go up here to the top of where our layers are, and we're gonna add a new fill layer. So you go to layer, a new fill layer, and we're gonna do a solid color. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna go fridge color. And then it'll ask you by default what you had just selected. So that's good. Go over to the layer mask, invert it. I like to do that by doing control I. Now that's all hid. Now comes the tricky part. Now what we're gonna do is do a selective edit. And what that means is we need to make a selection and then anything that we edit will only be affected within the selection. You can use this for a lot of different stuff. I mentioned this a little bit in the advanced editing book and uh, you can do this here by grabbing, let's say a polygon and we'll go in really close and I'll start drawing this polygon around the entire fridge. Now you could use maybe a quick selection tool to do this. It's really up to you what you feel comfortable with with your various selection tools. And once again, yes this is taking a while to do to get this all done, but once again this is something that once you get down the practice of doing it, you know about how long it takes you to do it, you can then give a quote for yes I can fix that for you, this is how much it costs. Okay, so we've got a selection, that's good, but what you can also do is besides just having selection, if you look up here, there's where you can also add to a selection by selecting this icon, and if you select this one, you can subtract from it. So a couple things I want to take away from the selection, I want to preserve Sub-Zero, the logo up here, so let me get up there. And now I'm going to draw around Sub-Zero, which will subtract that from the selection. So I could go do that, and now that's uh, subtracted. Let's go over here to these handles, and I want to make sure that I don't edit anything on the handles themselves of what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to draw a polygon around here. And once again, there's a lot of ways to select stuff. You know, there's so many ways to do things in Photoshop. You might find a, a quicker way to do your selections or subtracting from them, but this is the basis for it. So we'll go up here, and once again, the screen is just scrolling, by the way. Anytime you move your cursor when you're doing selections like this beyond where the boundary of the screen is. So I'm going to close that selection. Selection. That's good. By the way, that was control click. Do the same thing for this handle over here, and then the rest of this will go lickety split. So I'm just going to do this right here and bring down the selection here. That's good. And then draw it up to the top. Once again, yeah, this is kind of the boring time consuming part of it, but we're just about there. There we go. So now we've got a selection. If we zoom out here, now comes the fun part. All you have to do is take a low flow brush. So I've got the brush tool selected. I've got flow selected at 10% here. Let's zoom all the way out. And all you have to do now while you're on the layer mask for that color layer is start brushing that in. Now you could completely put that in there, change some of the opacity play around. I like to paint it. I like to have control. Now if you notice, because I have the selection there with the marching ants, 
as I'm brushing, nothing's going outside the lines. It's defining the boundary for my edit. So I'm able to edit that in there and see, notice how since I subtracted sub-zero in the handles, that's not being affected. So I can do that down here, fill that in a little bit, and we're gonna change this so it blends a little bit more too in the final step. But you can then, as your heart's desire, just go at it and paint away what you think needs to be filled in. Now, if that color wasn't quite right, you can also go back in to the layer itself, double click on that color and play around with the colors. If I didn't want it to be uh, quite so dark, I could maybe lighten it, but we won't do that. We'll keep it at where that was. So anyways, brush to your heart's content. We'll do that now if you'll notice too that I painted over the separation of the door. So let's deselect that. And all we have to do now is go in a little tighter, make a polygon selection where that door section is. And we'll just do it right about to there. Go there, close that polygon, and just hit the delete key, boom. Now as we zoom out, it's starting to look more realistic. But to make that blend even more, what we'll do is we'll drop the fill. Not opacity, but fill. This is a little bit of a smarter, uh, intelligent algorithm to help us uh, figure out where, or help Photoshop figure out where it needs to add that particular color. Now the other thing we can do, it's a little bit lighter than what I'd like. And it's also just still a little bit distraction. So a couple things you can do real quick is add adjustment layers. Layer, adjustment layer, and I like to use levels. Add a clipping mask to it by clicking this little icon down here. That means it's only gonna to apply to that layer below it, which was that color layer we made. So let's go ahead and bring up those levels and darken that a little bit. That looks good, looking really good. Another thing we can do is desaturate a little bit. If you think that's a little bit too warm, add a, sat a hue saturation layer, so layer, adjustment layer, and we'll go to hue saturation. Once again, add that clipping mask, and then you can start desaturating it as you feel you need to. So we can desaturate a whole bunch of color out of that. So very much a difference. So if we take a look, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put these into a group so we can turn them on and off. So let me just group those. And now we can see then that this is with the edits we did and this is without it. So this is before and this is after. And once again, to recap, the final product when this particular shot was all said and done looked like this. So I realized that was time consuming. There was a lot involved there. But when you take a look at something like this that took maybe about a 10 minute edit, if you charged 30 minutes of editing time, you can definitely pay for doing this. It wouldn't be for something for MLS, but some realtor comes back and says, hey, can you do that for me? Well, now you know how you can go ahead and do that. So practice that and then you'll know your time. The more you do it, the faster it will get. The big key here was selection editing. It's what I like to call it. It's basically just in Photoshop where you make a selection and then you're defining the boundaries where you can then edit. Nothing else will go outside those boundaries. It protected the counter the walls, everything else around it, just where we wanted to have that edited. Also the color layer, notice that I did a full color layer, I didn't just paint with a brush. That way I could use a layer mask and add and subtract as I need to, and to blend it very well, that was using fill instead of opacity, and then using adjustment layers on top of it with clipping masks, making sure that only those adjustments were applied to that repair color layer. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.